All right, Randeep, it's time to go shopping at the Five and Dime. The Vancouver Canucks, they've got a lot of work done already this offseason. Oliver ekman Larson, Connor Garland, Jason Dickinson. The focus now shifts to free agency, and what else can Jim Benning do to get this team closer to being a sure bet for the playoffs? What are their main targets, do you think, at free agency? Well, okay. First, you know, they made some big business by getting ekman Larson, Connor Garland. Connor Garland, who they signed to a new year, New deal as well, 4.95. But beyond that reach, you've got some money to spend here, 20 million in change, but it's not that much because you still have to sign Elias Pettersson. You still have to sign Quinn Hughes. It's probably going to take about 15 to maybe, you know, 13, 15 million dollars. And then your new inclusion, Jason Dickinson. You're looking at 17 of that 20 million already just kind of going up in smoke on contracts. So you're not necessarily in a very advantageous opportunity for the Canucks. They need two right shot D. They need a backup goalie. They need a fourth line center. And they have about $3 million to work with. How does that happen? There's areas of need, but cash? Yeah, they're trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents here. Yeah, and that's where uh, Nate Schmidt comes in. And, you know, we've heard all the talk and the discussions, and we've had it on Sports at 650 about how, you know, both sides would like to move on from that relationship. And it really shines a light on last offseason for the Canucks and just how badly everything went. Uh, Nate Schmidt hasn't worked out. Brayden Holtby, they bought out. Um, pretty much everything they've done last offseason uh, really just blew up in their face outside of maybe Travis Hamanick, who might be on their radar once again. So you look at what they need and, and yeah, right shot D is primarily what they need to add. And that's where Nate Schmidt had been playing last season. They may use him as a trade ship uh, to get another right shot D, but let's start focusing on free agency and what could be the targets there for a right shot defenseman for the Vancouver Canucks. Okay, from a depth perspe uh, you know, perspective, you have rumblings that Vancouver's already reached out and connected with Luke Shen, two-time cup champion. A good seven defenseman, maybe. Uh, I don't know if you want him in your, even your third pairing or higher up, but he's a good value option. So there you go. You've got one option on the right-hand side, but you need somebody, most importantly, to play alongside Quinn Hughes on that right-hand side. So I know, hey, Luke Shen might appease the depth, but you need to go for a, a bigger name and that bigger yeah. name can come in the form of if you have money and depending on what happens with Nate Schmidt here the top of the list Dan it's a David Savard I think he would be the ideal you know players playing next to a uh, Quinn Hughes but do the Canucks have that money don't think so no and and that's really what they are trying to find is a long-term option to pair with Nate uh, to pair with Quinn Hughes and look we know what Quinn is he's he's a rover he's going to be an offensively inclined defenseman and that's what he's great at um but it worked best with Chris Tanev um, when, you know, you have that stay at home option next to Quinn Hughes. That's what they're looking for long term. You know, I wonder if they were going to go after David Savard, why not? Didn't, why didn't they just keep Chris Tanev around last offseason, not let him go and sign with the Calgary Flames? But again, we'll lament a lot of things of what happened last summer for the Vancouver Canucks as they were trying to go through their options there. But I think the more realistic one for me is Brandon Montour of the Florida Panthers and obviously was with the Buffalo Sabres as well. We saw him with Anaheim years ago in the Pacific Division, was a hot shot young defenseman, lot well liked around the league, goes to Buffalo. Like a lot of things in Buffalo just blows up, doesn't really work out. But I think we saw more of the player that we expected in Florida. And because his numbers are kind of low, given everything that happened in Buffalo, I don't think he's going to cost as much as a David Savard. I think that is a prime target for the Vancouver Canucks, a guy who still transitions the puck well in Montour, but has shown he can defend a little bit as well, given his time in Florida. Brandon Montour would be my top target if I'm Jim Benning. And there has been interest going back a few years, even when he was in Anaheim. Apparently, Jim Benning had asked about him. You know, even when he went to Buffalo, there was conversation. So. What do we know about Jim Benning? When he likes a player, he will kind of latch onto that player. We've seen that with Oliver Reckman. Doesn't give up on them. <laughs> no, for two years. He's loyal. I'll give that to Jim Benning. But so the Brandon Montour reference is a good one because there is interest there. There's interest going back at least two to three years. 
Another name I'll put back into the conversation if you can't get Montour, because right shot defensemen, there's not many of them on the market. So you know there's going to be a demand, not much of a supply. I'm going to put Hamannick back in the conversation. He yeah. played well for you know one year with the Canucks last year. Started off slow, but remember, this is a guy who hadn't played hockey in a long time. He was injured to start off the year. But once he got going, he was good. I wouldn't sign him to a long-term deal, but if you strike out on a David Savard, if you strike out on a Brandon Montour, the only thing the Canucks would be able to do in that case is kick the can down the road for maybe another one or two year deal for a Travis Hamannick and hope that that option for, uh, sorry, for uh, Quinn Hughes is in free agent next year because, you know, this year that right shot D is not there other than a David Savard and a Brandon Montour. So hey, Hamannick is another name that I'm not, you know, I don't get that excited when I, you know, say the name because I don't think he's a first pairing defenseman, but worst case scenario, the Canucks have the devil they know. So let's keep bargain bin shopping. Uh, the Canucks at fourth line center can't uh, overspend like they did with uh, Jay Beagle for the last number of years. He's now in Arizona as part of that Oliver Ekman Larson deal. What do the Canucks do at fourth line center, Randy? Okay, this is a need that the Canucks have now after that Jay Beagle deal. And okay, if we look back at history, what does Jim Benning like, you know, with the centerman that he generally has in the fourth line? He likes guys that can kill penalties generally of the bigger variety. So we're talking about six foot, you know, two and above. So that leads me to two names that I have, you know, a fair bit of interest in. First, wasn't qualified by the Edmonton Oilers, Jajad Keda. He's a local kid from Surrey, British Columbia. I think he would make a lot of sense for the Vancouver Canucks. A, he'd be cheap. B, he could. Randy, he would be like the third best jersey selling in Vancouver. Oh, yeah. The Canucks were to Stein, Jujar Kada. Oh, the Punjabi community in Vancouver and <laughs> Surrey would love it. And Hockey Night in Canada, Punjabi fans would love it too, I'm sure, because it would be a lot of games on Saturday night. He would be a hit in the fan base. But if you are the Canucks, you need him as well because he is a bigger body like Jim Benning likes. He does kill penalties. He is physical. And he does come with heft, which is something that we've heard the Canucks are interested in. So to me, that's one name. If you're looking for a little bit more veteran, Pierre Edward, uh, Edward Belmar, uh, formerly of the Colorado Avalanche, but we've seen him bounce around a little bit in the last couple of years. An older player, but he is a vet. He knows his role, and he does it very, very well. So two value options there, one on the younger variety, one on the veteran variety. I know producer Drew would vouch for uh, for Pierre-Edward Belmar with what he's done in Colorado the last couple of years. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, Luke Glendening is always a name that comes up in fourth line center conversations. I don't, I don't know if that's uh, the one I would go with, but you know, thinking about some of the restricted free agents that did not get qualified uh, just a couple of days ago, David Camp uh, out of Chicago would be a really good fit at the fourth line center. But this is what the Canucks are doing. They are bargain bin shopping. They can spend maybe a million dollars on this spot and. That's what Jim Benning is going to have to work with. And he's going to have to see how you know, the market kind of plays out. Is a Ryan Getzlaff or a Eric Stahl type of veteran leader going to want to join in on the Vancouver Canucks? I I'm not sure they have that Stanley Cup contender cachet that those guys might be looking for if they are leaving, well, certainly in Getzlaff's situation, if he is leaving Anaheim. Finally, the last one is is goaltender. You know, they buy out uh, Braden Holtby. Now they've got to go out and find somebody that is cheaper and can tandem with Thatcher Demko. Who would you look at? Okay, there's a lot of goalies out there, and that's why the Canucks had to buy out of Braden Holtby. There was no trade market. So, you know, the benefit for the Canucks right now is there is a lot of supply. So you have your choice of veteran goaltenders probably at a pretty cheap price. There's a couple of names I'm looking at. Yaroslav Halak has done a heck of a job in Boston for the last couple of years. His last contract was a $2.25 million salary. And if you're the Canucks, you're probably looking at a goalie at or below $2 million because you don't have much money to spend. And you might have a little bit more if Nate Schmidt is traded, but I think you have to look at a goalie that's less than $2 million. So Yaroslav Halak, to me, is a perfect goalie to back up uh, a Thatcher Demko. You know, Demko is going to have his maybe 50 or 60 games somewhere in between there. But Yaro Halak, if there's an injury, if you need him to play more games, would be a perfect name. Another one I'd be looking at is a Jonathan Bernier. Playing on a bad team in Detroit, you know, coming off a $3 million salary, so he needed a bit of a pay cut there. But if he is interested in playing with a team that's maybe headed towards the playoffs or trying to head towards the playoffs, can you get him in that $2 million range? He played very, very well on a bad Detroit team. That's another player I'm looking at in this, you know, saturated goalie market. I'm really curious to see what Linus Allmark uh, ends up getting. Uh, that would be the goalie that I target in free agency. But 
Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the Canucks just ride and die with Michael DiPietro. Their star prospect goalie he didn't play much last year, was Team Canada's third goalie at the Worlds this past season. Uh, had played in the World Juniors as well for Team Canada. Look, he's he's got all the talent in the world. Uh, the Canucks with Ian Clark, their goalie coach, believe a ton in him, believe that he is going to uh, fight for a spot in training camp. That's at least been the message after the season has played out. When we talked to Michael DiPietro on our show, you know, he's very confident that he can push for a spot on this roster. If you're going to look for saving money, going with prospects is the best way to do it. What Dan, do you, you think? know what, though? You know what, though? Okay. I'm worried about one thing with Michael DiPietro, a lot of rust. He hasn't played very much. And if he's sitting <laughs> yeah. behind Thatcher Demko in the NHL, he's not going to be playing games. That's almost two years of just sitting around. For me and you, being a couch potato is fine. For an NHL-level goalie, not so great. What do you think the Canucks should do? Uh, maybe they'll go after Dougie Hamilton or Gabriel Landeskog. That's not, not realistic. Uh, let us know in the comments what you want to see the Canucks do in free agency and fill out those final holes on the roster. And we'll see you in the next video.